Hi, hey, welcome into another edition of Chatterbox Reds. I think we're posted everywhere, Nick. Uh, you know, usually you are the Mr. X Man. Obviously, I make sure that we're good to go on YouTube. I think we are on X, and I do think we are on YouTube to make us both happily uh, ever after here on this lovely edition on February 19th, 2024. If my math serves me correct, we are 38 days away from opening day. Um... Don't, don't, don't look that up. I just, that was a guess. Well, guess is in like you do quick math. Uh, but, but nonetheless, uh, you guys have Google. You can figure it out. March 28th. How many days is it? I believe it's 38 days, but that's here nor there. Uh, Nick, you got Is that a new red hat? It looks, it looks nice. I'm rocking a white tee and nothing else. So here I am, uh, looking like I just came right out of the YMCA gym locker at age 70. You, you look nice though. Yeah. You know, uh, the old fanatics every year gets me on a uh, uh, a red set uh, that I absolutely mm. do not need because I've got about six hundred of them and I just about wear the black hat backwards ninety percent of the time. So, but nonetheless, they got me. We'll see how long I ride this out. But uh, five days until we have actual spring training games. I do know that though. Fanatics, uh, fanatics. They've been in the news of late. They've been in the news of late, not in a positive spirit though, Nick. There's a lot of people that are very upset about the jerseys. I don't know where you stand on that. I've not made a big to-do about it as of yet. As you do know, I am a very, very, very uh, strict jersey connoisseur. I, one, don't really wear jerseys, but two, if there's something wrong with them, I'll let you know about it. The Kroger patch last year, it was a problem. It looked disgusting. It was off-white on white. Made no sense at all to me. Didn't know why they couldn't just put it inside the jersey. They did fix that, however, at some point during the season. So I was pleased about that. Um, there will be a review to come about how that Kroger patch looks this year. But um, you are you where are you at in the whole Fanatics jersey fandom here? Yeah, I mean the, the jerseys are a tough look. I mean, I, I... I don't. I think the red jerseys suck, anyways. Though, so it's kind of like whatever. Uh, the whole like pushback on fanatics, though. I I don't get that. Like, do you really want to go back to where you have to go buy everything in the team shops? Do people not realize how expensive stuff is, like in team shops and stuff like that? Like, fanatics makes it possible to actually, you know, like buy some stuff. So I've been a big fanatics fan. I do not understand why everyone hates fanatics. I think it's extremely better than what we had uh whatever we had pre-fanatics mm. so fanatics if you want to sponsor uh chatterbox reds uh send us an email at chatterbox sports at gmail or whatever.com you know all of these platforms anymore all they ever want to do is try to just they try to want to make you insert ads all the time youtube's popping up and uh, popping up a thing in front of my chat right now and saying now would be a good time to insert ads i'll put you know what I'll put the ads when I want to run the ads, okay? If I don't want to run ads, I won't run them. I'm sick and tired of these platforms telling me I don't need to run ads. I got all these other podcast platforms, Nick, trying to ask me to bring, put, we want your podcast on our platform. Uh, okay, why? Well, well, we can give you uh, two cents for every 25,000 listeners you have. Is that a good deal? No, I don't think that's a good deal. I don't want to do it. Now, I'm sick and tired of all of these people trying to make money off of a show when we don't need it. See, so if you got ad, if you got ads if 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 somehow some way if YouTube's running ads in the middle of the show I want to know about it I want to know about it okay I'm sick and tired of YouTube telling me that I have to run ads sick and tired of it okay YouTube makes enough money Nick they make enough money they don't need to come make more money off the off the little man okay go ahead and make your money off YouTube TV have fun with all that you don't need to come out here and filter yourself into the little man show okay. I don't want to run ads right now. Go ahead. He's in mid-season form, folks. Uh, you, you know, but we can tease that right after this quick word from our sponsors. Yeah. Chase is going to no. fireball all I'm not doing that. I'm, not, I'm just not doing it. I am so sick and tired. I mean, they play ads before the show when everyone clicks on the show. That's fine. Okay, so be it. So, so what? You might be a couple seconds behind on the live stream. That's fine. But now, but now you're asking me in the middle of my show to sit there. You pop up a thing in front of my chat. I'm trying to read a chat, and it's telling me I should run an ad. I don't want to run their ads, okay? I don't want to do it. That's here nor there. If you get ads, I want to know. But 
I don't know where we start. I'm sorry I got this show off a little bit of a helter-skelter. We talked about Fanatics jerseys. No, you, 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 Fanatics jerseys. You have ten fingers. I'm glad you showed those to me. Um, but anyways, now we're in a situation where we have ads. And here we are again with, uh, with essentially a rundown. The rundown consists of this. Hunter Green, some injury news. Uh, one injury news. Other Reds news. NL Central news and coming up. Okay? Um, so, before we do get to that, though, before we do get to that, I do want to say, okay, that I got to thank our sponsors. No, I'm kidding. That's a bit. <laughs> that's that's a funny. I thought it was a funny. DSC, though, we are very thankful to John at Deep South Commodities. That's why we don't need to run all those ghetto ads that YouTube's trying to get me to run. Um, where do we start, Nick? You want to talk about Hunter Green? Is that the, is that the start of the uh, of the show? Yeah, man. I think Hunter Green, uh, the Hunter Green news kind of stole the the opening week here of of uh, of headlines. But Derek Johnson said Hunter Green is working on a curveball and a splitter as a way to change speeds and slow down hitters. And so, uh, you know, that certainly got the old X app fired up. Um, the, the thing I would add on Hunter Green is he was working on that splitter last year. He did try that in AAA when he was making his rehab uh, starts. Um, so the splitter's not necessarily new, um, but he didn't. He never tried it in a game. So it'll be interesting to see if right. he actually, you know, crosses over that bridge. I mean, I think this is good, positive developments. I, I don't think I necessarily want to go full overboard and be like, oh, yeah, this is it. He's, he, he, this is what's going to get him over the top. First off, I don't think Hunter Green was all that far off with what he had. I think a lot of the uh, peripheral numbers, say, last year, Hunter Green was pretty close to, to already being there. Um, but, you know, hey, look, anything you can do to progress um, um, is usually good. My only small pushback would be, uh, you know, if 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 this is something he, you know, can't command for strikes, do, do, you, you know, you can you see it backfiring where, you know, you're trying to throw too many things out there when you were already pretty close to being um, a uh, a really good big league pitcher. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I giggle from the chat, but I, I was just going to add to the Hunter Green thing, the this the the whole. Listen, this is spring training, which should go, and also the very next phrase should go, take everything with a grain of salt. You know, I, I just, it's like, I don't know how much to make of that news because ultimately how much is he going to trust those pitches when it comes down to making an, a, a big-time pitch? You know, and may, maybe, you know, hey, maybe he's ready to go right out the shoot, but I would be venture to guess that he's going to, he's going to, he's going to hearken back to what he relies on or what he believes in the most because, uh, when it gets down to what we call around here at Chatterbox nut cutting time, you go back to what you've always been more times than not. And I don't think that these new pitches per se are going to be something that he leans on any time in the near future. Is it nice to know that he's working on things? Is it nice to know that maybe he uh, he does come up with something that he finds that allows him to to, to change speeds? Um, you said it best. It all comes down to whether or not he can locate it and whether or not you can throw thing throw it for a strike. Hunter Green seems to always have gotten himself in trouble when, realistically speaking, he doesn't have more than one pitch any given day. And sometimes it's not the fastball. More times than not, though, he relies on that fastball. And if he doesn't have secondary pitch, his secondary pitch, uh, throwing it for a strike, then then guys are just sitting there waiting on on uh, you know the fastball. And as we all know in Major League Baseball, it doesn't really matter how hard you throw anymore. Um, you can't get away with that. Back in the day, I think you could overpower guys. Uh, if you threw the ball really, really hard, right, and uh, you you would always hear the phrase "effectively wild." I think that's becoming less and less and less and less. Um, unless you're throwing, listen, 102, 103, 104, maybe 105 at this point. Okay, maybe you got something there, but that not you know, no disrespect, and trust me, none of us. Uh, almost, I don't, I don't venture to say none of us because I don't know everybody, but I think a lot of us have never even thought about or dreamed about throwing the ball 95 plus miles an hour like Hunter Green has. But it all comes down to whether or not he can locate pitches. And you said it best. He's he's shown glimpses of being good enough already. Uh, it just comes down to whether or not he can stay healthy, which is probably the biggest question mark, I would think. Um, and then after that, can he be consistently good? 
maybe not as good as he was against the Twins back uh, late in the year because I think that's some of the better ball I've seen him throw. But, it, you know, it just comes down to can he stay healthy and be semi-consistent. I, I don't know how you feel. I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times. Hunter Green does not need to be a bona fide ace to be what ultimately he could be to help this team win. Would we like him to be? Yes. Some people might have misconstrued his extension slash what he got paid to do, but I, he didn't really get paid to be a, a an ace. Like he's not. He didn't get paid to be a, one of the best pitchers in Major League Baseball per se. Now I think the Reds believe that he could be, but for all intents and purposes, if he's a solid, consistent starter. I will not be that upset about his career in Cincinnati if he doesn't turn out to be what we'd all hoped. I just hope it doesn't end up being a situation where he's n- never out there. Yeah, he's essentially like getting paid the same as almost Nick Martinez. Like that's yeah, that that's what his contract is. So yeah, he's not even close to that. And, and it, just adding on to your point, a, a good point about you know health. It's not even more so. Just obviously, you want to get a certain number of innings out of Hunter Green. The last two years, Hunter Green started off the season fairly slow. And then last year when he came back from injury, it took him a while to get back in that groove. Just being healthy, I think, will help him stay like in a groove. Once Hunter Green's been settled in, we have saw a lot of really, really good stretches um, the end of 2022. The end of last year, up until those last two starts, he was pitching as good as I think I've ever seen him. So it's not just the innings, it's also... Once he gets, you know, once he gets rolling and gets, you know, through some of those those tough few starts, that's when he can really, I think, put together hopefully, you know, you know, 10, 15 um, good starts in a row. Not all good starts, but you know what? You get what yeah, I'm saying. I you saying. know, 12 out of 15 starts were really, really good. And if you get that, that's where, um, man, this team's ceiling really goes up to another level. Right. No doubt about it. Um, all right, moving forward here. Speaking of injuries, injury news, um, you have some updates. Yeah, nothing too surprising here. Emilio Pagan um, uh, is coming back off of uh, groin surgery, so he's not going to uh, pitch in the first few games. Uh, Sam Moles had a shoulder issue. Um, he's going to miss the first couple games. Um, Noelvi Marte is missing the first five Cactus League games. Um, from that hamstring injury we talked about that he suffered in the Winter League. Everything I've read about this is strictly, this is just precautionary. The Reds are being very slow with his ramp up, uh, but they feel fully confident in everything he's doing right now. This is just more of just being extra cautious with um, a player as talented as Noemi Marte is. And then Alex Young sidelined for a few days with back tightness. They haven't said if he's going to miss any games or not. So, I mean, look, this is kind of what you expect when you get to spring trading. Um, but, but that's why it's good that, that when, you know, when we went through that exercise, we were going through, um, who was going to be in the Reds bullpen. And we said, well, right now, Fernando Cruz and TJ Anton are probably on the outside. If everyone's healthy, we know not everyone's going to probably be healthy at the end of spring training. So that's why it's good to have some, some depth there. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is whether or not it, Injuries and being, you know, sore and 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 hurt, if you want to call it that, are two different things. And right now, I don't think that anybody's really injured per se. Uh, that may be the closest thing that you could say that you're the biggest question the the biggest question mark so far, and the, and the biggest worry that all of us Reds fans probably should have is Nick Lidolo. Um, what is what does that ultimately end up being and looking like? Uh, hopefully, he continues to progress and progress and progress, and then he gets himself. But let's let's face it, he's not throwing the baseball competitively in a very long time in a very long time um and there's going to be some rust there one would think um but who knows maybe it's a blessing in disguise if you want to be mr pie in the sky super optimist about it uh you know maybe ultimately he he kind of uh gets a little bit of rest on his arm um so he's so he's got that going for him but again uh, it is concerning that he's not throwing the ball and what what feels like ages we're we're coming up on a year. This I mean not not literally, but we're we're close we're closer we're closer to a year than we're than we aren't. He did make some rehab starts. Um for, for whatever it's worth. I think it was what in August. Um yeah. um but and then you know just got shut down and broke my my heart and hey, you know, I, I 
Nick Little comes back next year, last year, could have completely changed the end of the season. I, I fully believe that. Um, now, how realistic was it ever that he was going to come yeah. back? I, I don't know if we'll ever really know the answer to that. Um, and, and most of these injuries, especially this time of the year, um, no, this, it's not a big deal. You hear that almost with every single injury right. that happens. So always take them with a grain of salt. Of, uh, uh, they're never going to say, yeah, this one looks really bad. Yeah, they, they, uh, the Reds aren't going to do that, are they? They're not. And, and it's almost like they, they've they've continued to do that with Lodolo, right? They're like something along the lines of, uh, oh, this, uh, what's, the, what's the phrase that David Bell always used? He's progressing, I think is the term. He's progressing. He's progressing well. If he if he continues to go the path he goes down, we're gonna look to take him to the next stage. It's like what these guys are running for office is what it sounds like from time to time. But hey, we'll see what happens. We like what we're seeing. We like what I, we're I'm seeing. sure. I'm sure almost every other team. This is the exact same. You know, no doubt. I was thinking. I was thinking the same. I, I read a headline or I read a little uh, piece on Shohei Otani. I think the Dodgers. Uh, the Dodgers put out a statement along the lines that they are thrilled to death with the progress that Shohei Otani has made, and they expect him to be back in in uh, in spring training in the near future. It's like, oh, what, what were they going to come out and sign this guy for a billion dollars, and then come out in the very first statement they were going to make about him was like, yeah, this 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 sob has been lazy all all uh, ever after we signed this guy. He's done nothing. He's lazy. We can't get him to work. What what, what are they going to say? I mean, come on, we we. Whether it's true or not, who knows? But let's not act like what they're telling us is actually truthful. Um, all right, other Reds news. Uh, what do you got, Nick? Right, we got two sections here, folks. So, so buckle in. Uh, Jonathan India is excited. That was the exact quote uh, to play outfield in first base. Uh, Levi Stout bashes the Reds after being DFA'd. Uh, Derek Johnson said TJ Anton will be a big part of the team and no opening day starter announced yet. Wouldn't put too much into that. They didn't announce our starter until May 9th last season. So, Trace, which of those hot topics do you want to do you want to discuss first, or any of them? Or- I'll take the one that maybe the the that would be the the um, path less traveled. Um, Antone, the fact that they brought his name up as somebody that's going to be a big part now. Whether again. <laughs> Some of this is like you're trying to read between the lines of whether or not these things are true or not true, and I'm not trying to say that that uh, that uh, basically he's lying. But the idea that Antone is going to be a large or whatever term that was used was a large or big part of this team uh, all comes. It all comes down to obviously his health, yes, but more importantly, like is he throwing the ball? Uh, am, am I buying the hype right now? Am I am I am I drinking the Kool Aid to get excited that? The pitching coach um, is excited or believes that Antone looks like he used to look, or is this just like fluff? That's the that's the the million dollar question. Maybe is whether or not that's true, or whether or not you know we're just trying to be nice. It, 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 but but my point is is that if Antone can get back to the Antone of old, which hand up in the air, I'll be the first one to admit, I did not think it was ever going to happen. I really didn't. I, I just thought for whatever case in point, unfortunately, careers end because of injury, and I thought that this was just another one of those cases, and it sucks. And But I, I said it last year, I'll say it again. I give TJ Antone about as much credit as anybody that I've seen come back from injuries because it's one thing to do it once, but to do it twice now and get yourself in a position where you're still considered a guy that might be able to be effective at the major league level, that's just a lot of uh, that's a lot of hard work, man. And I and listen, I know he can come out, and I know he could he could not throw the ball well, and I also know he can get hurt at the blink of an eye. Um, but I actually of all three of those things, that was the most surprising thing that I took away. I I knew Jonathan India was going to be excited to play the outfield at some point. I mean, you know, at some point, it's like it's kind of like the the uh, the stepdad asking his his stepson if he loves him. Do you love me? No, I, do you love me? At some point, you love him. You know, just saying. Yeah, uh, the the anto the, the wording of that was just what caught me a little bit off guard. You know, big part of the 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 team. Now, this was Derek Johnson. He hasn't been through the full David Bell PR school. He's not used to, to having to spin things constantly. So he might have been asked a question. I don't know. He's been there a while. Bit. Uh, 
but no, I, I did find that fascinating because I look, I'm not counting on anything out of TJ Antone. I kind of view TJ Antone almost as like a prospect. I, I don't, if, if that's a weird way of saying it, like he's kind of like a lottery ticket. Like I, I don't, not banking on him, but it's nice to have someone that clearly has that ability. Um, I did find that on Jonathan India. Um, it, it's like, it's cool to see him having a positive attitude about this, but it, it's funny how like your toe changes when it's like, all right, well, you're stuck here and you're trying to earn a paycheck. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, and again, I'm not faulting Jonathan India really for anything in the past. Um, we've talked about it at <laughs> plenty, you know, about how obviously he makes a lot more money playing second base. So he wanted to play second base as long as possible, but Hey, look, seems like he's having a good attitude so far. It hasn't been a distraction at all, which that is what is, is nice about that. I agree. Um, I'm excited to let him get some reps out there and you could do all the drills you want. I seen him doing some drills, um, obviously already in the outfield, um, you know, Swivel your hips and, and run. Get back behind the ball. Catch it. Hey, man. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, I, I did those drills as well, and uh, they're a lot easier doing the drills than when you're out there in live action and they hit a ball to you. Um, do I think he can do it? I don't know. I really don't. Um, it'll be. It'll. You know what? It'll, at least it'll be interesting to see. It's one of the very few things that I'm going to at least try to be open minded about and not cast too much judgment one way or the other before it happens i'm sure on the first miss fly ball or the first misread i see i'm gonna be like oh god here we go i don't know why i have to keep watching this but i do i guess um but could you imagine an outfield um uh, tj friedel's pretty good but could you imagine an outfield with will benson and, and jonathan india in the corners now theoretically that shouldn't happen but spencer steer and jonathan india i wasn't gonna go there but what about what about that? We got Will Benson in center, Indian left, and Steer in right. <laughs> oh man, I hope it happens once. You. That'd be fun. <laughs> Why not? What did you uh, What did you think about uh, Mister Levi Stout? Uh, uh, you know, taking a shot at the team on the way out. I don't after, make uh, walking <sighs> walking nearly six batters per nine innings last year. Listen, I don't make anything of it, okay? I think that there's times where you can be frustrated based off of maybe something that was said to you or you felt like you didn't get the opportunities that you thought that maybe you deserved. There's so many things that can go into a relationship with the, with the player uh, and the franchise and the organization and a team and a specific coach. And more times than not, it's success, right? I, I remember vividly a kid that I had coached in summer ball went to a a, a – predominantly a really good division one baseball program and uh he had a great family his, his dad was fantastic just the most upbeat people in the world someone that you would never guess in a million years that would be that would ever get themselves visibly upset at a at a coaching staff they would always take the high road if you will um and i i had seen him after his freshman year of college and him and his dad they had nothing nice to say about the program they were frustrated about it they couldn't stand the coaches all of these things, um, and the kid ended up starting uh, being the ace his senior year, and they love the they love the they love the program, and they left happily ever after. The difference between his freshman year and his senior year is that he played a lot and didn't play a lot. You know, he got a lot of opportunities, he didn't get a lot of opportunities. I some I just think that's what it is. I take nothing away from it. I hope that it, all the nice things that he said about uh, the Mariners, I think it was. I hope I hope all of that comes true and he feels great about it and he has a great career. But I don't think I don't I take nothing away from it, genuinely. Yeah. Do you? Did you take it personal, I guess? Looks like you took it personal. No, no, I didn't take it personal. I I I, I thought it was funny just because like it wasn't like he had a bad year and like it, his problem was he walked a million guys. Like that's that's why it's kind of funny that you're taking that approach when it's pretty obvious, like the fault was mostly your own. Um, there's not really a whole lot of pitch a coach can do when you're walking guys, but no, I mean, look, it is what it is. Um, you know, ask Jesse Weaker what it was like to, to, uh, you know, throw shade at the reds on the way out. How'd that work out? <laughs> did he deserved that. Yeah. Did, he, did, he, right. did he deserve that street, that stray right there? You think he did? Know, I'm I'm fired up. I no, I like it. He did get a he did get a video montage on his way out though. They gave him a they gave him a celebration on his way out. 
They did. They did. All right. Uh, Reds news, Nick. Yeah, and I better I better shut up because he's on the uh, he's on the Nationals. <laughs> yeah, you better watch out, Senzel yeah. Winker, back to back. Oh. All right, now here here Trace is your 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 real the spring training, uh, the real stories, the, the the big stuff. Good progression from Nick Lodolo and Frankie Montas. Rhett Louder is impressing everyone at camp. And Bally only broadcasting five Reds games, only three by Reds broadcasters. I want to ask you, Trace, about this. I just, man, this is just, like, the Reds are going to be on a lot. And I, I know I tweeted this out. Yeah. Um, you'll be able to watch them on MLB Network, um, MLB TV. Yep. I think a lot of those are free. We'll get into that when we get closer, you know, to the games. But just the fact that, like, Bally's only broadcasting three games. I do have a conspiracy on it. My conspiracy is, is they're only broadcasting like the first one and then the last couple and then one in the middle because they want people to go down to spring training and if they broadcast them. If it's something you can't see, they might be able to get more people down there. But uh, that's your, that's your conspiracy. That's my conspiracy. I think it has everything to do with the fact that it cost a good amount of money. These, you know, Bally sports of the world, if you would, it cost them a good amount of money to run a broadcast, to do a broadcast, and I don't think that they return the the they don't recoup the cost of, of what all actually it entails. You know, this is where I've been at for a while with this. Um, and I know that ultimately, if you don't have a level of a broadcast dirt for a professional franchise that you're going to get made fun of, or perhaps people will talk negatively towards something. Um, a la, we we talked about it earlier on 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 off the bench earlier today about how ESPN Plus kind of gets a bad rap a little bit because of the quality of the broadcast from time to time. Well, would you rather have a semi decent broadcast or call it whatever you want, call it a poor broadcast or no broadcast at all? Um, I would prefer to have something, and then I can decide whether or not it's worthwhile watching. And if you don't like it, well, that's okay. You don't need to watch it because. Otherwise, it wouldn't have happened anyways. So there's really no there's really no reason to get upset about it. So I just wish there was a lower level stream that the organization as a whole would provide. Now again, we live stream things all the time. I get that we're coming from an area where people probably think that I'm saying this as like, oh, you know, chatterbox. I, I I'm not saying I don't have interest in doing it. Trust me, if the Reds called me tomorrow and said, hey, we want you to live stream the games, we'd figure it out. But my my point is is that. It has nothing to do with with Chatterbox being involved with the live stream as much as it is just to say, hey, this isn't that complicated. We should be able to get some basic broadcast. And this is where I think MLB TV and or the Reds themselves have a huge opportunity going forward to at least offer these types of things on their own platforms. And maybe they can't do it now because of the TV rights and Bally, oh, maybe Bally holds all the rights so the Reds can't do it even though they want to. Um, it just feels like we're in a tough spot because, you know, there was either bad TV contracts that have already been signed. Obviously, Bally signed a few of those. And you couple that with the fact that maybe, maybe we're just at a point now where live streaming spring training games hasn't become a big enough priority yet. Or maybe we're the only people that care about it. Everybody us, us in the chat are the only ones that care about it. That's just not enough people to care. I don't know. But it does seem stupid that every game isn't broadcasted in some capacity. The The Padres actually do a webcast uh, for the games that aren't on. They're not on Bally. They lost Bally midseason last year. Yeah. Uh, but I saw, the, I saw they're doing it this year, and they had done it before in the past where they just have the radio playing over top of uh, probably a two camera setup. Um, and like, it's not the greatest quality, but when, when the reds were playing and it was on there, I was like, this is awesome. Like I can actually, right. you know, watch the game. And so I don't think, I think they would be allowed to do that. Uh, maybe the reds have something different. Maybe, you know, the reds contract said, we are the only ones who can broadcast our games. And, you know, maybe they think maybe, you know, Bally sports, Ohio thinks that, if there was some, if the other games were on the web, it wouldn't make the few games they do as as valuable, right? I, and that's, I don't know, but trust I, me, I, that's how it goes, man. Listen, there's still athletic directors right now that think that think live streaming uh, high school sporting events from time to time that we've done in the past takes away from the amount of people that are going to come to the game. It just 
you just never know, man. You really don't. It's yeah. some some people some people's perception of of what of what offering something up could do as a way to where people would go or don't go is wild to me. As we all know, blackouts are probably a perfect example of that. Have you have you, have you think anyone in Nashville, Tennessee, has ever thought, you know what, damn it, I can't believe that I can't watch the Reds tonight. I'm going to drive up to Cincinnati because I can't watch it. I'm going to get me a ticket. No, no one's doing that. It's a it's it's an it's it's outdated. It's something that hopefully at some point somebody changes. But um, it would not shock me in the slightest because every single team has a team to team deal with their TV rights. It would not shock me in the slightest if the the Bally Sports Agreement that they had, the Reds have signed would limit them to not having the ability to live stream the games on their own platform because they that's the deal they signed, and rightfully so for the Reds, right? If someone was going to give you the amount of money that Bally Sports was going to give you, and, oh, by the way, broadcast all the regular season games that most people care about and do a couple spring training games, you're signing the dotted line, you know, lickety-split. You're not worried. You're not worried about the few games that us degenerates don't get to watch. Yep. Yeah, 100%. Um, hey, all Reed. right. Go ahead. You got something to add? Always here. Are you ready for some NL Central news? You got anything I was going to ask. Uh, what about the division, Nick? What about the NL Central? I'm glad you asked, Trace. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm the, here. the Brewer, Brewers uh, re-signed Brandon Woodruff to a two-year deal. Um Cool, honestly, cool for for Brandon Woodruff. He's expected to miss the entire year. Um, the Brewers did non tender him, um, but they did work out a deal, so he'll get to rehab with the team uh, all year as a possibility. Sounds like a pretty slim possibility of pitching at the end of the season if all goes well. Uh, but Woodruff will be back. Probably more of an issue for the Reds in twenty twenty five. The Cubs signed David Peralta and Dom Smith to MILB deals. Um, Peralta, I, I do, I do kind of like the Peralta signing, especially when I found out it was a, a minor league deal for them. Uh, he's coming off a pretty bad year. He had a bunch of injuries, but, uh, he was a pretty solid player. So if you're getting him on a minor league deal, um, that, that's kind of a nice, you know, lottery ticket to have for them. Um, I found this one very fascinating, just especially because of how good he looked defensively in the outfield, but Sal Fralick of the Brewers expected to prepare at second base and third base this spring. Um, I know when I did my preview show um, about the Brewers and I was kind of looking at that team, they're very, they have a ton of outfield depth, but they have very weak infield depth. So I'm, that's obviously why that move is there, but I did find that interesting. And the pirates, they signed Yasmani Grandal, um, Josh Fleming and Chase Anderson, uh, the former red Um, Grandal and Fleming both have had some, a lot of success at times coming off some, some tough years. Um, so I, I, I like the grand all signings nice for them. Um, they lost Indy Rodriguez for the season, their prize catching prospect. Right. Um, so, so it's a good fit. Um, and, uh, he's a guy that was terrible and then also had the whole clubhouse issues in, in, in Chicago last year, um, where he, I think he took off early for the all-star game. Um, but he's obviously a very talented catcher, um, you know, at, at his best. So yeah, at his um, best. interesting, interesting signing for the pirates. The pirates have made some nice signings. They're, they're trying. They're, they're, yeah. At least it looked like they're trying. That's what, that's what, that's what some of the conspiracy theorists would say about all the small market teams is that they, they just, they just act like they want to win. They don't really want to win, which is a hilarious statement in and of itself. But, um, yeah, I, I don't. None, none of those I think are you know huge needle movers. The only thing that that I keep asking myself is when it when it when's the shoe going to drop for all these other guys? You know, I mean we're we're still waiting on some big big names out there that we ultimately know will will end up signing somewhere. It's a matter of it's a matter of when, not if. Um, and where's Cody Bellinger going to end up? You know, uh, unless unless that's happened in the last few hours, I I you know I, I'm waiting for the Cubs to do that. I've already prepared my mind for that to happen with the Cubs um, because at this point, it's safe to say the only team that really could get significantly better uh, with additions is the Cubs. I mean, obviously, we know the Pirates are out. They're not going to be signing anybody big. I think the Cardinals already did what they planned on doing. The Reds have already said what they've said about it. So, you know, you're sitting there and you're, you're looking at the Cardinal or the Cubs, excuse me, asking yourself, when is it they're going to pull the trigger on somebody? Um I guess we just sit here and we patiently wait. Um, I don't know. It's kind of wild. But one thing that Rob Manford did say, and, and, and this was brought up uh, again uh, not that long ago, 
um, on Chatterbox was, you know, maybe Major League Baseball does need to do something about this whole free agency thing, and they make there be a, a drop dead period where you have to sign. Um, that way, we can have some excitement and some buzz, you know, right there before the season, and all, and also, if if anything, provide some clarity, or just provide some clarity. Like if if there's a big signing, I guess at this point, and don't kill me, Chad, if I'm wrong on this. I've not been you know glued to uh, X.com the last maybe day or two here, but Blake Snell is still available. Is that correct? Yeah. So you have Snell available. J.D. Martinez is still available, and Jordan you, Montgomery. And you, okay, Jordan Montgomery and Cody Bellinger. Like all of these, those are those are prolific names. Like that's a little bit of a problem for the league. Like you got it. That that would have been like good PR for the for Major League Baseball if those guys signed a month ago. Now it's like kind of you're already getting a buzz for spring training. You're already going to get a lift for opening day. Not that you need the PR. Obviously, all PR is good PR to a certain extent. But still, my point is it it, it would behoove Major League Baseball to have these guys sign earlier and earlier. So uh, we'll see when that all happens. I don't know. I don't know when. I mean, it feels like it should have already happened, no? Yeah, the the Cubs, I think it was the owner. I think it was Ricketts that said it. Um said that they're waiting to be able to make Cody Bellinger an offer. Like he's not taking offers right now. Now that could have been all, you know, just the the positioning and whatnot. But it seems like the Cody Bellinger camp from what I've read is completely content. If this drags off, drags out into March, um, they are going to wait until they get absolutely what they want. And Bellinger's Bellinger's interesting. Um, I mean, like obviously getting Cody Bellinger would be huge for the Chicago Cubs in 2024. Um, but he's a risky player. Like he, I I don't, I can't remember a player that has anything close to his profile where he's been the best player on the planet and he's been a below average player, like within a year span, who knows what he would do, um, over a seven year contract. Like that could like, like he could be a Jason Hayward contract for the Cubs, uh, which clearly weighed them down at the end. Um, or he could be a superstar for seven years. I really have no idea. And I don't think anyone knows any idea. And I think that's probably why he's having such a hard time getting the dollars to match up what he feels he's worth. Yes, yeah, negotiation at its finest. That's what this all comes down to, right? Each team, the team thinks that uh, the longer they hold out, probably the better leverage they get, and the player wants to play the game of okay, well, we'll play, we'll play chicken and see who flinches first, and you know that can go both ways. I think it's worked out. It worked out uh, in both directions throughout the course of, of sports history, in, in either way. Um, thinking back to is it uh, Chris Jones for the for the uh, for the Chiefs. Um, he holds out, and and next thing you know, the Chiefs cave and they pay him. Well, that worked out for both parties, obviously, at the end of the day because they win the Super Bowl. But then the opposite could be where um, I can't think off the top of my head right now. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, but there there was a running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, Why can't I think of that kid's name? Anyways, he held out. Everyone's going to know who I'm talking about, and it's going to pop in my brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's Bell. Yeah, look at you, NFL guy. Um. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell. Uh, Le'Veon Bell holds out thinking he's going to get the same treatment and it ends up like he never, ever gets back to what he was. I mean, it just it can go both ways, so be careful what you wish for on both sides of that party. I hope it drags out all year. I mean, who knows? I'd love to see. I'd love to see. As long as the Cubs don't get him, I could care less. But why not go to the Dodgers? Why not? Just go back there. I mean, at this point, let's just... Let's get as many good players as we possibly can on the Dodgers, and then we'll just all see if we can't somehow knock them off in the postseason. That'd be the yeah, that'd this, be the fun game. We'll just see yeah. if we can't sneak in the wild card round. Maybe we get lucky and they get in the wild card round as well, and you knock them out. They've already like hit their maximum wins above replacement, so yeah, like it doesn't really it doesn't add anything to them. Yeah, like, you can only win yeah. 162 games in the regular season, so you know that it's like at some point you can't get better than that. So we're we're it seems like we're already there. Um, all right. I don't know if there's anything else that you have to add here before we got to get into maybe some of the spring training talk and what we have coming up. No, I think we, uh, 
I think we covered it all. All right. Uh, some news to note. We are going to go today. I, I oh, We teased this before, and we've been going back and forth. Today's the day, though, that we really have confirmed that we are we are actually going to do this. Um, we were going to do it all along. It was just a matter of what we actually did. The crazy thing is, is I don't even think Nick really knows the plan. It's kind of wild, if we're being honest. Chat, it is uh, it is absurd. Um, what we're doing is pretty dumb. But uh, we're going to leave on... Currently, the plan is to leave on the early, early morning of the 5th. I don't know. I might try to convince everybody that we leave on the 4th at night. So, you know, later in that evening so we don't drive as far on the 5th. But nonetheless, we're leaving on the 5th. Um, we do plan to partner with somebody to help all this become a possibility. Once I get the names of all the people that are making this possible and we get the, the businesses, I, I'll kind of paint that picture out. Um, but this is, uh, listen, I think sometimes there's a the perception is reality uh, to a certain extent. We're a small company, everybody. I mean, we are, we got like five full-time employees and trust me, there are, there are times where I sit up at night and I worry about, you know, X, Y, and Z that needs to go right for us to continue to grow the way in which I'd hope we can continue to grow in. But, um, but my point is, is that us doing this is more or less just a, um, well, it's, it's a test, right? It's like, okay, let's go see if this juice is worth the squeeze. We might get out there and yeah, we might enjoy it or whatever. But then if we come back and we realize that we really didn't get anything accomplished, then okay, that seems like a lot of money that we just spent trying to do this. So we're going to leave on the 5th. We're going to do a vlog. So it's going to be me, uh, me, Elliot, Nick, obviously, and um, a videographer. And then, believe it or not, we have another special guest, which I will tease later, that's going to come out um, after the fact, who is also a Reds uh, person. And the goal is when we are out there, obviously, to cover the Reds uh, in spring training. But, before, but on our way out there, we're going to do a vlog, and we're going to document this as much as humanly possible. So we're going to drive the van. Um, I think it's a 27-hour drive. Um, golly. Um, we're going to stop in Kansas and we're going to do uh, Kansas, Kansas state. We're going to go the next day. We're going to Denver. Um, and we're going to do back to back days. Again, this is the plan according to everything working out, which it should. Uh, the plan is to go to an avalanche game, do a review there, do a, there's a Celtics or not a Celtics, but the uh, nuggets play the Celtics the very next night. We do a review of that. And then we head down to Goodyear, um, which our very first day we get down there, I believe, is the Dodgers. Hopefully, Otani is uh, back in the mix by that point. We'll see. And then we're there until the 17th. And we fly back. Um, the only out, though, the only out, the only caveat is Elliot will not be there if I promised him or I told him that if uh, the UC Bearcats make the semifinals of the Big 12 Championship, which, again, I doubt, with all due respect, I doubt that happens. But if it does happen, um, I'm going to actually let him not leave early, per se. But instead of him flying back with us, that's the other crazy part I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, he's going to fly back to uh, Kansas City, watch the game, and uh, Spur Bear is going to meet him out there, and he's going to go back with them. But here's the crazy thing about all this. We're driving out there. <laughs> This is the chatterbox way, man. This is the dumbest thing you've ever heard. Am I getting home? We're dri we're driving out there, okay? And we looked up we looked up how much it is to store a van. Uh the Reds <laughs> the Reds the Reds are in Arizona. They play in Arizona. I believe it's in May. Don't hold me to exactly the date right now. It's in May. This is the plan. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a great plan, but it's the plan we're going with. We get out there. I can't possibly drive back. Okay. After all of this content and doing all this, I just, it's just impossible to drive back. So we're going to store the van for that month and a half, I think it is. We're then going to play in the offices. The, um, fortunately, I think Nick has got the out on this. I, I don't know how he got the out on this, but he got the out on this. We're going to put the van in storage. And we're going to play minute to win it games back at the studio. We're going to live stream them. 
And whoever finishes, whoever finishes last, the two people that finish last in this competition, they have to fly back out and they have to get the van and drive it back home. They do get to watch the Reds in Arizona, though. So that's the cat. That's that's the that's the perk of driving twenty seven hours, I guess. Did did I get the out because my wife's having a baby in May? Yeah, that, that that might have been part of it. Did yeah. that kind of get me out of it? Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll use that as the as the excuse. Another strike against Nick. Yeah. Anyways, yes, all of that is made possible by some people that are very very loyal and nice to us, and um, you know, like I said before, our goal is to go out there and make you laugh, give you some insight, and hopefully, if nothing else, continue to give you something to. Uh, to look forward to when we go live or whatever it is we're going to do on this on this trip i'm sure by the end of it me and elliot who knows what happens uh it'll be an interesting it'll be i have a feeling that nick is going to be like the uh he's going to be the what was that old uh mtv show or the show where the celebrity death match you you know, you know what i'm talking about the mills guy is it the mills guy chat where he's the referee I think I think that's what it is. Anyways, you're probably going to be the Mills guy between me and Elliot. We're gonna, I mean, eventually at some point, Eds will probably roll with us, but we'll be up late. The the, the people want to know uh, is off the bench going on while we're driving out there. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a a, a challenge. It's going to be a challenge. Uh, there are dates in which Miami, um. The Miami Redhawks play, I believe, uh, as we sit here now, we're slated to do all of their games. Um, so, if the game, if, if the Miami Redhawks are playing, we're, we're going to figure that out. That's the thing about Chatterbox. We don't always know what's going to happen. We don't know. I don't know. You're asking me questions that I don't have answers to. It is February. It's February 19th. We fly by the seat of our pants here from time to time. We'll figure that out. We could stream. We could do some live streams from our phone. We'll get content up. Yeah. Somehow. Um, yeah, some people are suggesting that maybe people can drive it all the way back home. Maybe. Maybe somebody would do that. I don't know. Car transportation. That actually might be a good idea to look up. <laughs> is, it, is that sad that it just popped in my brain? Wow. Car transportation. Never thought of that. Chad, anyone going out to Arizona? One on one, only buy a one way ticket. Yeah. Anyways, it's a long drive home, you know. Um. All right. Any other chat questions we have before we call it a night, and we will be back better than ever. For those that are wondering here, just to, to kind of wrap things up on our end before maybe we extend this out a little bit longer, Nick. We will be back. Uh for these lovely people doing another show when, where, and maybe even add why if you want. Yeah. Saturday, first spring training game. Uh, we'll uh, be live probably around five 30 or so whenever we get to the, uh, the ninth inning. So yeah, reds guardians that starts at three Oh five on Saturday first spring training game. So looking forward to that. Uh, also, um, got a, uh, doing an interview on Wednesday. I'm recording, so hopefully it'll be up on Thursday, uh, previewing the St. Louis Cardinals with uh, one of uh, our guy Chuck Walter's friends uh, in the TV business down in uh, St. Louis. So looking forward to that. So look for that on on Thursday. And then, yeah, once we get to Saturday, podcast every day. Uh, I guess even on the road, we'll find a, we'll find a way to record some 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 podcasts. Hopefully I oh, we are, buddy. This. We're going to be recording. Well, yeah, I mean, I've found a, I've always found a way. I even one time forgot my mic and recorded a podcast on my phone and got it uploaded for you. So Love we'll that. find a way. But yeah, once we get to uh, Saturday podcast after uh, every game all throughout spring. So uh, make sure you subscribe to Chatterbox Reds in your podcast. Those are audio only. Right. Um, but we'll continue. We'll continue some live shows. But yeah, audio only. Quick recaps of the games. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, Shane Combs asks, is there, is there any golf plan on the way? Uh, there, uh, there is one day, uh, where we plan on, on, uh, on doing some golf and there's, there's some plans for some other things, but it's one of those things where again, 
um, you know, and, and Nick's wife doesn't have to worry because Nick is a is a is a very smart and intelligent young man. Um, but it's sometimes maybe my wife that I just uh, I just rather wait until we get on the road and we start you know going and doing things. There's a there's a there's an off day. Just saying, there's an off day on the 11th that we're there. Uh, there's a day game on the 10th. And I don't know if you know anything about Phoenix and other surrounding areas and what may be close by. And by close, I mean four and a half hours away. And by four and a half hours away, I mean northwest in that general direction, about four and a half hours. Plan to do some content with that. Um, and there is some scenic golf courses. I think the goal is maybe at this point, um, not that many people maybe care about this, but I think it is uh, me and Elliot, his goal is to break par together. I think that is the next goal that we have. So we'll see. We might do that content on the way out there. We might not. We'll figure it out. But we're going to make it fun. We're going to literally squeeze as much content out of this trip as we possibly can because, quite frankly, it's really ridiculously expensive. Uh, I've seen a debate, Nick, um, to kind of wrap up the show, if you will. I've seen a debate on Twitter, and David just brought it up in the chat about how they should move spring training back to Florida because the cost of getting to spring training is a little too high. But then there was like a, I mean, there was a, there was a pretty, pretty sizable debate about that. Where do you stand with that? Do you, do you care? Do you think it matters or? I mean, I think Florida would obviously be a lot easier for a lot of Reds fans to get down to. Um, I do know the cost of, of spring training has become really exorbitant. Um, I think a lot of people think, oh, you got spring training, probably get $5 tickets for every game. No, nope, they're probably more expensive than, especially if you want to have a good seat, they're more expensive than most games at, at, at Great American Ballpark throughout the year. So, um, yeah, I mean, I know the Reds got a really good setup there. I, I, I never went to Sarasota, but you know everything I've ever read says that it's just so much better there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I feel like it would make more sense to be on this side of the country. Yeah. I don't really know. I, I, I Listen, I was shocked at how expensive it is out there. I got to be honest. I I was thinking in my mind, like, hey, you know, you can go out there, you find a nice little affordable hotel. Well, those don't exist. I don't know if you know, but those don't exist. The Airbnb, the Airbnb thing is, is, you know, is what it is. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you don't on those. But again, if you're not going out there with a multitude of people, you really can't do the Airbnb thing, right? So like we're we're fortunate from the standpoint that hey, if you got four guys, traditionally speaking, you're going to have, you know, two hotel rooms. You add two hotel rooms together, traditionally that adds up to being a, what a, an Airbnb that's semi worth it. But if you're just going out there as like a two-man crew, which is what the vast majority of people would do, I mean, it's it's not it's not for the it's not for the middle class folk for the most part. I mean, it it's pretty wild how expensive it is, and I think some of that's because of the the you know the the area in which it's in. Yes, Phoenix is is a little more of a highfalutin type area, but more importantly, I think it's like there's so many teams in that area that just supply and demand. It's as simple as that. You know, you have the I don't know, how many teams are even out there. Eight maybe eight or nine. Um. Maybe more than that. You might Google. I was, I, do do a Google. Cool. Do a Google for me, um, chat. Just quick little Google. Uh, how many teams are in the the Cactus League? But um, yeah, I don't know. What's the, what are you most looking forward to? It's uh, two weeks away, Nick. Fifteen. Fifteen. Gee, many Christmas. Yeah, it's split. Split right down. Uh, Carrie says, "Sleep in the van." I genuinely. You guys think I'm joking? I'm not joking. If I was going on this trip with someone, one other person that was cool with just being like crazy, crazy, I would sleep in the van. Now I'd have to, I'd have to find like a YMCA or something like that to get showers every day. But I think that'd be hilarious content. At some point, I I might do something stupid like that. Draves goes cross country, sleeps in the van. St. Louis. St. Louis is only like six hours away. Is it really that close? I think. It just feels farther from me. Well, yeah, you're. It's because you live in freaking Alaska. By Alaska, I mean I mean, I meant to say uh, Canada. Almost <laughs> Canada. I can see Canada out my back window. 
Yeah. People are saying I'm throwing you under the bus now. Nick Craig's saying I'm throwing you under the bus. I'm not saying Nick wouldn't do it. I'm saying we got four guys. There's, I mean, even if we all wanted to sleep in the van, I don't. I don't think that. I don't think our. I don't think our wives would appreciate that. And I think after the first day, we'd have two people dead. I mean, I yeah, I'd do it. I'd... Let's live. You only live once. <laughs> That's right. Uh, all right. Anything else to add before we ramble on for two hours? No, you covered it all. All right. Um, all right. As always, we'll be back better than ever. Um, Nick, when are we back again? Let the people know. Uh, Saturday, ninth inning. So about 530 or so. Right. Uh, it'll be a busy day on Chatterbox because I think uh, UC plays at like 3 o'clock. So you have Chatterbox Reds and Chatterbox uh, Bearcats probably about back-to-back. Yeah. Love that. Oh yeah. And also, just found out that I'm single. Sorry. So, hey, hey, listen. This might be. This might get me in hot water, everybody. But I'm gonna tell you something right now. If there was never. If there was ever a time to be single, it's not a bad thing to be going to Vegas. If you're going to go to Vegas, I'm not going to Vegas. Not planned, of course. But I'm just saying, if you were single, that's not a terrible place to be. I'm sure. Um, all right. Other than that, I'm sure I'm in hot waters. And uh, my wife, you know, she loves me. It's a joke. Um, Let's where else am promos. I going? <laughs> Nick, you run the you run the promos, Nick. Chatterbox Bearcats live after UC Oklahoma State on Wednesday night. Some are calling it a must win for the Bearcats. Chuck and Houdini will be live. Be sure to check that out. And then, of course, off the bench with Trace Fowler Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, hopefully Trace is uh, alive and well uh, tomorrow morning when we check in on him. Yeah, we'll see how I am. We'll see how I am. Um, otherwise, tomorrow, look forward to seeing many of you in the chat. Uh, but otherwise, uh, there was another question I had there before I end the show asked about opening day. We will, we will, we have some opening day plans. We'll explain all those as we get closer and closer and closer to that date. 38 days away. i um, going to try to update the show graphics. We're going to work on a new intro. We're going to try to revamp some things here. So maybe, just maybe, the very first day, which is uh, when's the first day of the new season? I would consider it Saturday. Is that fair? Yeah. All right. That's fair. All right. Until then, I got to tell you, I uh, I appreciate all of you. Thank you for watching our, our goofy little show each and every single night. And as a reminder, please do us a favor. Go leave us a, a review if you haven't already on the podcast. You can download them. Uh, give us a five-star review if you like us and more importantly say something nice the more times you do that the more times we grow the more times we grow the more times we can do crazy stupid stuff the more times we can do that it leads to us hopefully entertaining you that's the whole